Many precious artifacts have been recovered within Egypt over the years. Many ancient Egyptian tombs found intact, untouched for millennia, still containing the valuable items left for their kings, with the intention of their beloved pharaoh's use in their passage to the afterlife. And with the mountains of gold and glistening jewels which have captured the attention and the hearts of those who have explored these ancient archives, a lot of the most astounding relics go largely unnoticed. The solar boat could be seen as a particularly good example of this mass overlooking of the most interesting of things. At the foot of the Great Pyramid, once beneath several multi-ton, precisely placed blocks of limestone, lay the Khufu ship, a full-sized ancient Egyptian vessel sealed into a pit over 4,000 years ago. Why is more not heard regarding this astonishing find? Strongly believed to have been built for Khufu, King Cheops, who was the second pharaoh of the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom of Egypt. The ship is now preserved in the Giza Solar Boat Museum, built at the site in 1985. It is completely dedicated to the preservation of the boat, possessing state-of-the-art preservation technologies. Khufu's ship is one of the oldest, largest, and best-preserved vessels from antiquity. It measures 44 meters long and 6 meters wide. It is also acknowledged as the world's oldest intact ship, and has been described by all in the know as a masterpiece of woodcraft. It could sail today if put into water. However, what is clearly the most amazing fact regarding the solar ship, the vessel was never intended to sail on water. The solar boat was built to sail through the air. It was built largely of Lebanon cedar planking in the shell first construction technique, using unpegged tenons of Christ's thorn. The ship was built with a flat bottom composed of several planks, but no actual keel, with the planks and frames lashed together with halfa grass. The boat was found complete, but in pieces across the layer's floor, laid in a logically disassembled order beneath the pyramid. Subsequently reconstructed from the 1,224 pieces which were laid out in order over 45 years prior. It took several years for the boat to be painstakingly reassembled, primarily by the Egyptian Department of Antiquities chief restorer, Ahmed Youssef Mustafa. Before reconstructing the boat, he had to gain enough experience on ancient Egyptian boat building. He studied the reliefs carved on walls and tombs and many of the little wooden models of ships and boats found in tombs. Ahmed also visited the Nile boatyards of Old Cairo and Mahadi and went to Alexandria, where wooden river boats were still being made. It is now believed to have been known as a solar barge, a ritual vessel to carry the king with the sun god Ra across the heavens. However, it bears some of the signs of having been used, a fact which has baffled many researchers due to the ship's only purpose being that of floating in the sky. It is possible that the ship was either a funerary barge, used to carry the king's embalmed body from Memphis to Giza, or even that Khufu himself used it as a pilgrimage ship to visit holy places, and that it was buried for him to use in the afterlife. Yet burning questions arise from such conclusions. Firstly, how would the ship fly? Secondly, if the ship was indeed intended to be used in King Khufu's afterlife, why was it resting in pieces beneath the pyramid? And why did it show wear from use within the king's life? Did this ship somehow once possess the power of flight? Did ancient Egyptians? We have been covering a lot recently in regards to the compelling evidence left by the ancient Egyptians, revealing their advanced ability to traverse most of the Earth prior to Columbus. Is the solar ship a piece of this puzzle? Kamal el Malak, who somehow predicted the existence of the ship and has been attributed with its discovery in 1954 through his extensive personal research of the area over 14 years, initially found another pit also at the foot of the Great Pyramid. Unfortunately, it seems this layer had been robbed shortly before he found it. Archaeologists and Egyptologists alike rejected his claims of some sort of ship having been within this empty cavern. Yet when the other pit was found, which did indeed contain a ship, his prior claim was vindicated. How did Kamal know? 
He would later claim that he believes something rather special was stolen from that first cavern. Could it have been the thing which made the ship work? Regardless of this other cavern's lost contents, the solar boat is certainly an amazing thing in its own right. While perusing the many perplexing sights we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue, evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people, placed far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten, could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework, also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples, hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision, they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of this ancient cave is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Longyu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, Many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world, presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste, as if the machine tasked with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. One of our personal favorite ancient sites is the ancient fortress of Sacsayhuaman. We believe this site was built an unimaginably long time ago, yet it would still be a daunting proposition for any invading party. One of the most impressive features of the site and the reason why it is ranked as one of our favorites is the inexplicably baffling stonework that makes up the fortress's maze of outer walls. Created without the use of mortar and encompassing some of the most astonishing ancient stonework we feel to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many other sites within Peru undoubtedly contain incredibly precise stonework, Sacsayhuaman is the jewel in the crown when it comes to the evidence for a lost advanced civilization. The largest stones in this boundary being 28 feet high, regularly academically estimated to weigh over 120 tons, 
with more enthusiastic estimates placing the largest stones at around the 300 to 400 ton mark. Located on the outskirts of the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, it rests on an enormous artificially leveled plateau. It consists of three outer barriers, gargantuan walls, 1,500 feet long and 54 feet wide, created in a strategic zigzag shape. They surround a paved area containing a mysterious circular structure. As recently mentioned in another video, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest two phases of building was undertaken at certain sites within Peru. We feel that the constructors of Sacsayhuaman are the same people who indeed built most of ancient Peru. This group were the ones who utilized the enigmatic protuberances even found upon the casing stones on the Great Pyramids. However, interestingly, there was another, later phase, and although not as complex, still far more advanced than any academically studied ancestor who are currently claimed as the actual builders. This means that more than one ancient civilization must have called ancient Peru home. A later group re-inhabiting these sites, flourishing to a point where they were clearly inspired by the site's original builders, becoming highly capable stone builders themselves. How old is Sacsayhuaman? Who could have possibly built it? And why did they not utilize the mysterious protuberances found on much of their other stonework throughout Peru? It is, undoubtedly, one of the most incredible ancient sites still standing on our planet. And thanks to the incredible capabilities of its builders, it will remain standing for many more years to come. It is a site filled with inexplicable features, which we find incredibly compelling. In perusing the amazing archaeological sites within ancient Mexico, one will inevitably be confronted with a site called Cuicuilco. Just south of Mexico City's urban sprawl, a four-step round pyramid that, like all ancient structures, has secrets to tell, a secret like the Great Sphinx, which can reveal to us, all through overwhelmingly physical evidence, a true understanding of its true antiquity. The academic world, with its papers and books abundant, funded, researched, and mass-published, supported by an institute of individuals who seek to destroy all things which disagree with them. These people would have you believe that Quiquilco was constructed at the earliest in 300 BC. However, nature would tend to disagree. Quiquilco was hardly more than a small mound with some scraggly trees growing upon it back in 1922, before Brian Cummings received permission from the Mexican government to begin an excavation at the site. During initial excavations, Brian noted that the well-known Pedegro lava flow had partially engulfed this ancient structure. He became increasingly interested in the site after learning that geologist George E. Hyde dated the Pedegro lava flow at over 7,000 years ago. Additionally, when Brian's workers successfully cut deep trenches down into this ancient lava in an effort to locate the base of the pyramid, they not only passed through the bottom of this layer, but continued through several other eras of sediment before finally reaching the high-quality paving at the original level of the structure. In fact, over 18 feet of ancient sediment lay below this 7,000-year-old volcanic activity, including two other previous lava flows, each separated by layers containing artifacts from no less than two other separate inhabitations of the area by civilizations of varying advancement. Also evidence of a past submersion in no less than six feet of seawater, another ancient structure lending credence to the Great Flood. The pyramid itself, once masterfully constructed using uncut chunks of lava. Amongst the first layer of erosion and decay resting just above the original foundations of the structure, it seems were remnants of a primitive civilization that moved into the area shortly after apparent catastrophe. Is this proof of our civilization once being destroyed? Along with this initial primitive civilization is an extremely ancient lava flow, which is followed by a dramatically far more advanced civilization. Amazingly, Cummings successfully produced dates of over 10,000 years for the original sediments, more than 2,000 years before ancient Egypt was said to have been built, though we feel this was most probably just a re-inhabitation of these powerful pyramidal structures. 
And although he also found dates far older than 10,000 years, he reluctantly put them down to anomalies and did not record them. After the details of this excruciating and highly efficient research was understood, Brian Cummings predictably experienced the cold shoulder of conspiracy. It seems mainstream archaeology, along with the well-known overpaid figures who partake in this limited public discussion, have successfully avoided the subject altogether. Indeed, it would require a dramatic rethinking of the largely accepted chronological development of man. It would also require an extremely tricky maneuver in verbal acrobatics to get away with explaining the presence of a highly complex, highly capable, highly advanced ancient civilization, building impossible structures well over 10,000 years ago. And although it seems that mainstream archaeology has successfully avoided having to make such a spectacle of their belief systems in their attempted denials of such evidence, it will continue to be something we would like to see.